Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how I draw my faces. Um, these are some of the ones that I sell on Etsy. You can um, purchase them and use them as a download. Uh, use them as a download. You can use them in your collage sheets for whatever. They're already shaded for you. I don't know if everybody likes that or not, but anyway, that's what I did. But I'm going to show you how I create my faces. Um, I'm just going to use cheap copy paper and I've also got this grid that's super helpful especially with me learning it keeps me you know <clears throat> keeping everything level because when I tend to do my eyes without any line work under it if I don't do my um, let's see if I don't do my face with the marks for all of your eyes nose and mouth my eyes tend I, I'm right-handed and I, I tend to kind of drift upward but if I do this, I can I can get them pretty centered and even. Um, but if you don't want to draw the lines, you can always use that grid paper underneath here and count them out. So one, two, three, four. Then you skip the same amount. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you can draw your cheeks. You know, start your cheek lines here. But you can do it either way. I'm just going to show you how I do it with this grid and all I did was this was find a grid I don't remember who mentioned this. I think it was Courtney Diaz Little Raven Inc um, You can use cheat sheets like that or and I just Use that if you want to do lettering But I printed it out and laminated it and I use it as a dashboard in my notebook Okay, anywho, I'm gonna line it back up and because you've got the lines all over you can kind of give yourself a a little guideline mark and if you write lightly or get a um, light leaded pencil you can go over this lightly and then darken it back in and it's not so noticeable but see I only got one high here you can do the same here you can exaggerate all of these and just play around with how you want them <clears throat> and I go up with an eyelid sorry if I'm not instructing you very well but <laughs> I'm a visual learner so if you watch maybe and right here is usually where I like to kind of do the nose and you can do a simple nose I'll get into that in a minute I'm gonna do eyeballs but this is how I do my eyeballs you can do them football shape you can do them um, just say this is another face you can do a straight line and then just kind of angle it like this and then draw your eyeball you can do a big one well middle me, medium a super big super small you can angle these lines um, and it gives just whole different expressions mad sad <laughs> I love it I love playing with different types because I get super bored super quick with the same thing over and over but with mine I tend to like big eyeballs and then I'll show you another variance here. Sometimes when I do the eyeballs, I just kind of look to see if I have the same amount of space between the eye and the eyelid. And these grids help so, so much if you want perfect. Now you don't have to be, and I don't always. But sometimes I'll just color in like a half moon piece like this, and then shade it in, blend it in with my blending stump. That's one way. Then another way is just doing the same shape and I try to keep the same distance away from the pupil and the eyeball, the iris, away from it. And then I always like a little highlight, like a little um, glare, whatever. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Then I'll shade this part in and I love my pencil, y'all. I don't usually use a whole lot of um, pen in my work because pencil's always been my first love then a blending stump is my second then you blend it out and it smudges it and it just makes it a lot of times I'll just go ahead and shade that in too and it just changed the shading now just changes everything that's another way one other thing I like to do this is something Deb Weir's does she kind of puts these lines in here and that gives it I mean you can leave it with or without and then another one if you wanted to you can always just shade in the whole thing 
leave a piece and this pencil lid's too thin to be filling this in and that gives it a whole another look it looks more whimsy to me and then you take your stump blend it out and that's another way so that's with all of these you can do different ways the ways I do them with just the basic football shape now you can do the same thing I was practicing here earlier but you can do the same thing with these just change the um, the pupil change the size of it these look a little more realistic to me when you do them that way it gives it a whole nother look and that's actually I love it too all of them are good when you do these you can leave that eyelid kind of overlapping <coughs> And then draw a little eyelid. There's so many different ways. But anyway, you get the picture of that. Now if you wanted to do just round, if you wanted a more illustrated look with the eyelid, you can do the same thing. I'll just draw them out here. I mean, there's so, so many different ways. You can do rectangles and then just kind of curve everything or not one of ones that I really like lately is doing this football shape and then like um, like a U shape almost well yeah like that I really like that and I always put a little tear duct piece there and sometimes I add eyelashes sometimes I don't and you I mean you could curve them up you can just sling them down <laughs> tons of different ways anyway that's how I do some of my eyes I hope I covered that okay so once you get your eyes going um, figure out just play around with it and see what you like better and what comes naturally to your movement you know your hand what feels more comfortable and you can always do it this way too I don't know there's so many videos on how to draw a face and to mark out you go halfway halfway again and then cut this line in half for your nose um, but for me I like a more whimsy approach where the nose is lower than up here and I'll show you how I do some of my noses this one of course is one it's a favorite because it's simple <laughs> it's simple and it's whimsy then another one would be <clears throat> and I saw this I don't remember what class or video but just doing a triangle and make a circle with it with your blending stump and then the placement of your nostrils will give it a whole different character as well you can round that out and come over here with nostrils and this is like a cute little button nose with that rounded part up here you can do them like that and if you wanted a more you know just play with your shapes exaggerate them different ways you've got this one and I haven't really done this this shape <laughs> that long of a one before I'm just gonna play with it and see this is a snooty character I don't even like that let's not even go there well I guess it'll work Let's see. I might need to sling that out a little bit. That might would work. I don't know. I think instead of doing the nostrils flat, I should have went upwards like that. There. Because that's what that looks like. And then you may not have... I don't know what that would do. That looks like a bird nose. <laughs> I'm just showing you, you can exaggerate them, you can make them fatter and flatter. Um, but you can play with these nostril shapes and put them outward, you can fill them in. Um, hmm, let's see, what's another, gosh, even when you do your eyes and your nose, 
you could do just a line like that if you're more illustrated. Am I drawing this big enough for anybody to see? So if you've got your eyes, you could just do a little curled up nose. That's another way to do eyes. There's so many ways. I mean, oh my gosh. It just depends on what, you, what you're looking for. My faces, sometimes I'll do these little things and you can draw longer eyes. Now I'm back on eyes. I'm wishy-washy. You can just do a little nose or no nose. That's the way I, I really tend to favor this and um, that one. Those you'll see almost of all of them, like here. And it just gives them a different look. She's a little more whimsy. And see, even if you add the whimsy, the whimsy nose with this eye or this nose with that eye, it changes it up a bit. And even these, this football shape, play with the sizes of the football shape. You can do a um, more squinty version. You can do a bigger version and still put your eyelids over it. Now I'm getting scribbly looking, but I hope this helps some of you. And the mouths, um, my mouths are pretty simple. You either do just a straight up turn, you can do a downturn. It doesn't matter. You can do it plain and just leave a line suggesting there's a mouth. Um, and then you can just do a slight M shape on there and fill this in where it's kind of dark with your color or your pencil. And then just put a little line. That'll give you the idea of a mouth. And do the same thing here. And then you got a little sad mouth. So you just play with the different angles if you want to smirky when you kind of do you know you still do the same thing and your nose would be kind of straight you know gives you a different attitude um another one my favorite now and a lot of times if you have your nose like that i usually tend to do the mouth the top of the mouth and try to match it up to this part and just space it down a little bit and I'm crooked see that's why this helps me out a lot so let me go back over here I'll show you so if this is your nose and see how I think you can see this line right through here and that keeps me squared up a lot you don't have to be that perfect and when you play and do this a lot um, you'll figure out what you like anywho there's the little lips and it might be off whatever a lot of times I'll do a little pouty lip where I'll do that M shape with the little curls on the edges and then I'll just kind of meet these lines and this this line I always I'll a lot of times I'll do it too close. I like a bigger bottom lip. And this eraser is the bomb. That's the Tombow Mono Zero. It's super awesome. But a lot of times I'll do it up too close and then I end up moving it because I like a, a, like I said, a bigger bottom lip and just a little slight curl. And when you add your shading to all of this, that's when everything just looks so much better. And always like a little highlight and that's it your shading just makes such a big difference there's another one I kind of copied a friend of mine <laughs> Emily um, where you just do your your basic line and just a little that's it that's a whimsy one that's what I did on her and this was um, my friend Emily with Stampin' Bella she's She's the one, she does girls like this, and they're so awesome. Anywho, there's the way, and I like to add just a little, kind of dimple-like on the end of most of my mouths, or I'll have like a, just a little scribbly something to indicate it's deeper in this area. Man, that nose is throwing me off. <laughs> that is wonky. Okay, but say you just play and figure out what you like. So once you and just do a bunch of eyes, do a bunch of noses, there's more ways than this. These are just my favorites. And then once you figure out what you like, do your faces. 
I'm sorry about my breathing, y'all. I've got asthma and it sucks. Let's see. So now, when you get your eyes, and sometimes I'll draw my face, for the, the head shape first and then my eyes, and sometimes I do the features first and then close it up. It doesn't really matter. I'll do it how I showed you. So I'll start here. One, two, three, four. Just picking a number. Four. One, two, three, four. So now I've got the width of my eyes here. And I'll just do the football shape. This is what I like. And if you've got the Timaway River paper notebooks, it's pretty see-through thin paper. This works wonderful on it, and it actually smudges with that um, stump. It smooths out really nice on that paper. It's nice to play with. And that's another thing you guys need to know is different papers react different ways. So if you're having trouble um, smudging out or getting the effects you want, try a different paper or a different pencil or pen, whatever it is you like. Um, because that sometimes can be your problem and you struggle all this time for for nothing. And those are things I wished I would have known because I fought with um, what was the there was something I was playing with the other day and I was like man if I would have had this paper and known about it <laughs> oh my gosh it would have made life a lot easier but it's okay because that's how I learned. It's just playing and experimenting. See, I like these little pouty lips. I'm going to go ahead and draw this lower because I know I always. So, once you have your. See, that's another thing with the pupils. That's what I tend to struggle with is how far apart. But you can kind of use your grid underneath there to see if you've got them the same width and then eyeball this. You don't have to be that perfect. I just tend to have issues that way. I hope I'm still, I need to be watching this camera. I'm new y'all, so <laughs> don't be too hard on me. Okay, so once you have your, your um, let me scoot this. Your facial features drawn, if that's the way you wanna do it then you can take, let's see, you see how these are, you can tell where the lines are under here. You can go as wide away as you want or, or not. And then you can look and kind of see how big of a chin do you want. And this can always be fixed. It's just paper and pencil. And I like for my jaws to kind of come right at the mouth. Sometimes I do. But you can kind of do a square and you can leave it like that if you want. But I tend to Round that area off. I'll show you how I. Um, let's see. Let me do the eyebrows here. That's another thing. I just do a line, a little squiggle, and then I'll thicken that up a little. <coughs> and a lot of times I like my hair to kind of come, you know, right over the eye, kind of cut off the eyebrow some. But that's one way of doing it. But now you see how this looks. And when you get your blending stump. And you start shading things. Shading is everything. And my shading may be a little different from everybody else's. That's okay. Find what makes you happy. What you like. But look at how different already that looks. I debated whenever I did the um, faces to put on. Etsy whether to shade those faces or not or leave them just blank and the blank looks so odd but when you shade them it's like whoo big difference and then a lot of times I'll take my blending stump that way you give you can make it wider shorter <coughs> I'm not really telling you what I'm doing <coughs> excuse me but I still, I shade. When I shade, even like on one of my other videos, I do like a rect uh, no rectangle, a square here, a square here, 
and then just kind of round it off. That's getting your cheek kind of set up. And I always like to leave that upper lid kind of lighter. And then you do another square. And leave just a little highlight through here. And it makes a huge difference. You can shade that like that if you want or not. It gives you that little button nose appearance. Shade under here a little bit. And I totally went away from the head shape. <laughs> Got distracted and started shading. Oh well. You can make a little round piece here. Another shading area I do is I usually from here make a triangle shape and just blend it out. It's just what I like to do. And this might not be correct. Some people look at this and say, good glory. But it works for me. If you get too dark, just take some out. Sometimes I do ears, sometimes I don't. And that one you come off to where your nose is and right at the eyes. And you can make them big or I usually keep mine kind of narrow and they're never the same. And you just darken it, shade it, and that is it. Now as far as the the shapes, I really like this particular way of making the head shape. Kind of do a V right out maybe to the nose, not quite, and then straight up, but then I always kind of pull it in. You can see where the other lines were. Then you can do, um, gosh, short heads. You know, like before I brought the chin, okay, let me start over. If you don't draw the facial features first, then your face is going to determine where um, your eyes and everything will be. And I'm doing this maybe too small. But this same principle, I'll do two lines on the side. My paper's moving around. And then kind of do a line, but then I curve them and kind of connect them a little bit darker. And this is more of this chickie's face. That's more of how I did her face. And then you do your eyes, if you want to use this or not. Like I said, I tend to go higher. I'll go up here. A lot of times my right eye, if I ever freehand it like this, they're higher. <laughs> Unless I draw a line lightly. And then do your footballs again. And then here's this basic nose. You just got to leave enough room for your mouth and little or no chin, it doesn't matter and do the same thing. Then you can decide if you want big eyes, which I really like. Little ears, no ears. You can do them low or high. It's totally up to you. You can leave them wonky doodle. <laughs> and then I love skinny necks. Some people do the necks like we would have a normal neck, but I like skinny whimsy necks. And then I just curve it here. You can put whatever kind of clothes or no clothes. You can do no neck and just add clothes. Totally up to you. But I hope this helps some of you. I'm trying to think if I covered everything. I think I have. I'm not sure. Hmm. Oh, the hairline. You can do rounded hairlines. I tend to part mine to the right. Um, anywho, when you shade under these noses, just do a little shade. The shading is everything, and I love my stumps. I have several. Shading just makes it pop off the page. Alrighty y'all, I think this is it. I'm thinking while I'm doing this, have I left anything out? There's so many different ways of doing it. But these are some of the ways that I do it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope I've covered everything. Until next time, I think next video I'm going to draw a face and then do watercolor so you can see it. 
But anywho, thanks for watching. Not bad, what's